Hi, yeah, what's the crack? It's Erin. If you saw my last video, then you saw me trying to explain what my tumor diagnosis is. But I've had a lot of people message me and a lot of comments since then, just kind of looking for more information. So I did have some health issues between the last video and now, but I'm going to start off with kind of diving into that diagnosis a wee bit more first. So it is a diffuse low grade glioma, which is grade two, with a BRAF mutation. So diffuse tumor is one without clear boundaries there's no set outline for it so it's hard for them to tell where it starts and where it ends so that's really really not good in terms of diffuse gliomas there has never ever been one to go into remission so every person that has had a diffuse glioma of whatever type um, it has reoccurred and reoccurred in a terminal way that eventually ended their life so unfortunately that's like really really hard to process it is grade two, which is not fantastic, but it's obviously not the worst. If they had caught it earlier, we could have got it at grade one and the recurrence rate would be lower if it was diffuse then. I'm not too sure. At grade two, it's still growing quite slowly. And I said in my last video that the oncologist told me that we hope the next one is going to be grade two again, but then the one after that's probably going to be grade three. And once they hit grade three, things accelerate pretty quickly. Okay, so it is a glioma. So a glioma is definitely like a category with multiple different types of tumors in it, but they all come from one type of brain cell called the glial cell. So that's where they're unsure with mine because it doesn't fall into any of them specifically. It shares things between multiple different types of them. So why they can't give me a super specific type of glioma tumor, they know that it came from a glial cell. So then there's the BRAF mutation. So this is something that is only found in two to 5% of gliomas. And I'm very, very lucky to have it. So for the BRAF mutation, there is specific medicine that is targeted at that at just slowing it down. So the medication hasn't been around that long and unfortunately it hasn't like cured anyone, right? It just slows it down, slows it down and then eventually stops working. So in terms of that, there's a lot of like mixed reviews, mixed answers on how effective it is, but everyone is like in unison in the fact that from the beginning it works really, really well. But in terms of a long-term like dose or if it can ever cure it, it's just kind of unknown as of right now. But I'm very, very grateful that I have the BRAF mutation so that I can go that route if they recommend it. I do have my meeting with my chemo oncologist on Tuesday of this week, and that is to have the meeting to discuss the BRAF mutation medicine. I will let you know how that goes. I spoke to a lovely, lovely doctor yesterday, and her name is Ashley, and she is the same age as me, and she's also going through this process. And she has a very similar kind of situation as me, not identical obviously but a similar situation she explained to me how she tells people about her tumor and i laughed i laughed when she told me and i said to her i will definitely be using that and i'll be crediting you for it and so what she has been saying to people is just because i don't have a brain tumor doesn't mean i don't have brain cancer it's literally like a whack-a-mole <laughs> where one will pop up we get rid of it another one will pop up we'll get rid of it another one will pop up and that is a very funny way to describe it. And it's just unfortunately where me and her are both at. But she's doing amazing. She's doing absolutely amazing. And she's going on to um, be a resident now and eventually being a pediatric oncologist, which is, I literally nearly cried when me and her were on the phone chatting about it the other day. So in terms of what has happened between the last video and this video. So you'll remember me talking about my anti-seizure tablets that I'm pretty confident that that's what's causing the breathing issues, right? So. When I spoke to my surgeon last, it was almost two weeks ago, so it was a Tuesday, and he rang me and he said, okay, your blood looks good now, the levels are good, how do you feel? And I told him, not great, you know, my breathing has taken a million steps back. And he said, okay, instead of staying on the four tablets that you're on now, that increased dose that we talked about, drop back to the dose you were on before because you didn't have any seizures on that before. So I said, no worries, but that was the Tuesday and I had started off that day with the high dose. So I didn't drop until the Wednesday, the next day. Come the Thursday, I was actually on like a work call. It was at the very end of the day. And just in the last few minutes of the work call, I just got that feeling. I just got the feeling that a seizure was starting. And it was just kind of, it's just an odd thing. Like I wasn't really able to say anything. Do you know what I mean? So. I was really, really glad that it was at the end of the day and that Devon was home. I was super grateful for it. 
and it wasn't like the seizures I had back before we knew it was a tumor right I haven't had one since October but it was a similar feeling for sure I knew exactly what was happening but it didn't progress on to the next stages but then it lasted longer in the initial stage and this is the first seizure I've had knowing what's happening so it was actually a lot worse to be aware my heart was going super fast like my breathing was going super fast and we were very close to ringing an ambulance which if you know me if my leg was falling off I wouldn't want to ring an ambulance if I had been home on my own I definitely would have but Devin was there with me it passed eventually and then we went to the emergency room on the Thursday night and the last time I'd spoke to my surgeon on the Tuesday he had said to me listen like it's disagreeing with your breathing. You need to see a neurologist, like as soon as possible, you need to get your medicine changed. He said to me, give me 48 hours and I'm gonna call you back and I'll let you know when your appointment is. And I said to him, okay, as well, I'm running out of my anti-seizure tablets and can you renew that prescription for me? And he said, yeah, of course I will, but I'll, I'll be talking to you within the 48 hours. He didn't call me in the 48 hours and by the time that it passed, I was in that hospital right in the emergency room. I was kind of confused as to why I had a seizure when I've not had a seizure on that level of that medicine before. But they said it's not unusual from dropping from like a higher dose to a lower dose of anti-seizures to trigger a seizure. It's really not that uncommon. The next day was a Friday and my surgeon's office is closed Friday, Saturday, Sunday and then they're back on a Monday and so I didn't get a call that weekend and then I waited like a few days into the week. I gave them my first call and I left a message to be like hey I'm running out of my tablets like I'm waiting for that call back um, if you could give me a ring back that would be great and then I didn't get a call back so I rang Thursday at 9 a.m because I know they're closed for a long weekend and I was going to run out of tablets on Monday left the same message and I got a call at 20 past three that afternoon the girl said to me your surgeon's out of the country he's gone and I said okay well when is he going to be back and she said not until Wednesday and I said to her, well, I'm gonna be out of my tablets by then. And she said, well, even his assistant is out of the country too. So I was like, okay, well, what should I be doing? Like I've just had a seizure from dropping one. It's not like I can skip a couple of days on them. And she was like, I really don't know. I don't know. And she said to me, like, you could maybe try like your GP or your family doctor. And I said, well, will he be able to renew that for me even though it wasn't him that gave me the prescription? And she was like, I'm not sure you might have to go to the ER. And I was like, okay, like if I go to the ER, can they give me the prescription? And she was like, I really don't know. And so I was freaking out a wee bit and she said to me, you know what, I'm going to call the urgent neurosurgery clinic right now and I'll call you back and let you know what to do. So I was like, okay, that's great. I really appreciate that, thank you. I didn't get a call back, which was very stressful. And so on Thursday night, me and Devin, we waited for three hours to see a doctor at the walk-in clinic to get that prescription refilled, which they did, which was absolutely fantastic. And the doctor that we got was so incredibly lovely. And so, yeah, we were really, really grateful for that. And that was after driving around to like pharmacists and asking them if they could renew them and them saying like, no, we can't. So that was a bit of a busy week for us. And I also had my heart ultrasound as well. And I have my appointment this week on Wednesday, I believe, to get the results for that too but like I said in my last video I'm like a hundred percent sure my heart's fine I'm so confident it's the anti-seizure tablets that I'm on I was so incredibly moved by all of the kind kind comments on my last video and I had a good cry over them if I'm being honest and you know when I seen like the super thanks that some people had left like you absolutely do not need to do that and I had that conversation with a few people and you know the responses of well this is our way of giving you a hug just blew me away and I just cried out it was just so so nice and I got so many messages even over on Instagram which I'm slowly working through my messages I'm so sorry that it's like a long response rate I'm just like slowly but surely working through them so many messages on starting a GoFundMe but listen so whenever my tumor was originally found back in October, my lovely extended family started a GoFundMe for me and it helped get my family over here. It helped me and Devin while we weren't working, to be honest. I don't think I ever mentioned this on here, but whenever Devin asked for the week off of my brain surgery, he lost his job. His boss let him go. And part of his job was that he had a work vehicle and his boss knew that was the only vehicle that we had and he just like took it off him and was like no you've lost your job 
so we had to like find someone to take us to the hospital on the day of my surgery which we were incredibly grateful to have his big sister we were able to get like a second hand vehicle with that too so it really really helped us and um, neither of us expected to not be working for like three months so it was really really great and Devin's still you know building up his work again now um, so things still aren't back to normal but that really really helped us during that time and so I would feel so so incredibly guilty to do another one like I've had my GoFundMe, I've had people's kindness, so I really would feel awful. But that does not change how kind it is for all of you to say that to me and for me to get those comments and to get all of those kind messages. So I really, really, really appreciate it. I ended up getting a neurologist appointment next week. So I am so grateful that hopefully they will change my anti-seizures in that appointment. That would be fantastic to get a new anti-seizure tablet. And we're just kind of slowly but surely trying to get stuff together. Devin's still in his visa process. We're still trying to sort things out with the dog and the wee bun and everything. I kind of ranted about in the last video anyway. But going forward, my focus is really, really on the brain tumor community and all of the people that are going through this, that have went through this, that know someone that's going through this. And so I'm in the process of maybe starting a Facebook group. I would really love to have like a monthly call where we could just like all jump on Zoom or on Facebook or whatever and just chat for an hour every month just to see where people are at and if anyone wants to share anything like I feel like that would be such a nice community to have especially for people that are kind of going through this on their own. I It's been really really lovely connecting with people over this and I would love to kind of connect you all together as well. So that's kind of where my focus is and I mentioned before wanting to get back into my vlogs now that the weather's getting a wee bit nicer here in Canada that's definitely going to be coming up soon as well. So I'm sorry if this is kind of a rushed update I just kind of wanted to keep you on the loop because I know a lot of you are wanting to stay in the loop and wanting to stay up to date and are worrying and I really don't want that either. I feel like I didn't go into my tumour diagnosis too much in my last video because I was still trying to process it myself and just kind of going through it where for me now it's been a long time since I've got the diagnosis it feels like and we've talked about it a million times me and Devin and we're both like we've processed and we're ready to move on and just kind of be grateful for every day in the day to day and just take certain steps to just appreciate everything and just have really good memories so that's why I feel a lot more comfortable talking about it today and I'm looking forward to creating more memories with him with my family when I eventually get home and with you as well sharing them with you so if you've gotten to the end of this video thank you so much for watching I appreciate you all as always and I really hope that you are good and that you're having a nice week and that you're having a good time and you're feeling okay and so I am going to work on that Facebook group and expect a wee video soon where I'll come on and I'll kind of explain it and I'll put the link to it as well so thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time bye bye